Hi there, everybody. My name is Lisa, and I want to welcome you to another English class here on Verbling.com. In this hour, I'm going to be doing a reading class. So if you have a reservation for this class, you can go ahead and use that reservation now. You always have the first two minutes of the class to use your reservation. And if you do not have a reservation, then after those first two minutes, then you will see a Join Class button. So then you can just click on the Join Class button if you are a Verbling.com member and join at any time. If you're not yet a Verbling.com member, then you can go to Verbling.com and then check it out and see what it's like. And if you want to join to be able to take as many classes as you would like, then you can pay $45 per month, and that way you get to take um, all the English classes you want. We have English classes pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and um, lots of different kinds of lessons. We have different teachers. I'm one of the teachers. Like I said, my name is Lisa, and I'm from the United States, and I live in Washington State. So, um, hi there, Fernando. How are you? How are you, teacher? I'm doing well. Thank you. Where are you calling from, Fernando? I'm from Mexico. Oh, wonderful. What part of Mexico? Uh, Mexico City. Okay. I have been there before. Yes. Long, yes, it's been a long time. <laughs> I have been there. Very nice. Yes, I've been to different parts of Mexico. I have friends that are from uh, Mexico, so... Yes, lots of different places. Excellent. Yes, yes. I'm waiting till the time I can go back. All right. <laughs> when you will back, yes. I invite you to go to it. Uh, okay. Pos pos posole. Posole. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, hi, Oscar. Hello. How are you? Good. And Vizlav, how are you? Hello, I'm well. How are you? Good. I, I love your rabbit. I always like to see Thank your you. rabbit. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, um, I put the link to the article that I chose for today. It's in the verb link chat. So if you go over there, you can open it. Looks like you have. And let's see, I'm going to put it up in the screen share. So we're going to uh, read together. And everybody can mute their microphones now so that it's we have quiet. Does everybody know how to mute and unmute yourself? There's a... If you go to the top, this little bar comes up and you see your microphone and you can click on it to mute. Fernando, do you know how to do that? No. Um, you can, um, well, you can also click on your picture. So you can click on your picture and then you'll see in the right hand corner there's a little arrow comes up and you click on the arrow and then it says mute. And then if you mute yourself, then that way we don't hear any back. There you go. And then if you want to unmute, you just click on it again. And then that way uh, the microphone will work and will hear you. So it's nice in um, the Google Hangouts if everybody has their microphone muted, unless you're talking, just so that we don't hear any uh, background noises that might be hard for us to to hear when other people are talking. So hi there, Yuki. Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. OK, welcome. Um, just noticed I spelled the name Hayao Miyazaki. OK. Yeah, you might, be, you might know more about this than I do. <laughs> yes, it's, in, it's a Japanese anime to creator. Exactly. Yes. Famous. Very, Very famous. Very known. Yes. yes. <clears throat> so let me just uh, welcome everybody, and I will go over how I do this reading class so everybody understands. I choose articles from different online sources, sometimes uh, New, York, New York Times, 
or other newspapers, sometimes blogs, personal blogs or business blogs, sometimes from online magazines. Um, so I just find lots of different types of articles with different topics so that uh, during the reading class you have a chance to be exposed to lots of different types of words, vocabulary words and phrases. Uh, every kind of industry or topic usually has its own terminology that it uses. So today I chose an article and it comes from Variety Magazine which is a magazine that talks about the entertainment industry. So the link to the article is right here and this is what the page looks like. So this is the Variety uh, website and this is the article that I chose and it's about uh, Hayao Miyazaki who is a Japanese uh, animator and uh, has had some Oscar winning and nominated uh, animation movies full length um, animation movies which you may or may not be familiar with but we're going to read an article about him and I put it in the Google documents like this so that we can make it bigger so everybody can see it and also I can highlight some of the words that you may or may not know but I like to go over vocabulary words and I like to uh, point out some grammatical structures sometimes as well and sometimes if a student like Yuki, if you have questions, uh, if you don't understand something, then I'll do my best to make it understandable for you. Sometimes uh, authors aren't always the best writers, so <laughs> sometimes they're writing. We have to uh, break it down a little bit to be able to understand it better, and maybe sometimes even change their punctuation. But um, so today is about this guy Hayao Miyazaki, and the title is. Hayao Miyazaki remains animated even in retirement. And then the subtitle is Autour explains his vision for Oscar nominated The Wind Rises. So let me just explain a little bit in the title already. There's some. So he remains. So to remain means you're still. You know, you're still something. And in this case, he is still animated so that's kind of a play on words because he is animated um, referring to the cartoons that you know they're animating this uh, cartoon or it's called an animation but it's also a way to describe somebody who's still very lively so a person can be described as animated when they are very um, energetic or enthusiastic or they have a lot of life, a lot of animation in the way that they speak or in the things that they do. So he, they're saying that he remains animated even in retirement. So apparently he said he was going to retire, which means he's no longer going to work full time. Um, and so that's kind of what this article is about, is what is he doing now? So the way I do this is I'll uh, read some and then I'll stop and then you'll have a chance to read out loud and then I'll go over the vocabulary and then if you have any questions just um, make sure you turn on your microphone and then tell me. Sometimes I'm not uh, looking at the verbling chat so I don't see if you put a, a note there or a little message so it's better if you just use your microphone and uh, talk to me because I might be looking at this other page. Okay, So here we go. And let's see, I think uh, Manuel. Hi there, Manuel. I just saw that you uh, just came in. I want to say hi to you. Hey. Hi, Hello. Manuel. Good afternoon. Manuel, where are you calling from? I'm from Spain, in the south of Spain. Okay, wonderful. South of Spain. Uh, what town? Uh, it's in Huelva. It's near of, in, near of Sevilla. Okay. All right, nice. I have been to uh, Sevilla before. For, so I know that place, but I probably don't know your town. <laughs> yeah, great, okay. wonderful. Well, welcome to class. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so I'll get started. Hayao Miyazaki remains animated even in retirement. Altour explains his vision for Oscar-nominated The Wind Rises by Carol Horst. 
You'd think that after announcing his retirement from the feature film biz last year, 73-year-old Japanese animation legend Hayao Miyazaki, never one to seek out press, would be welcoming a time of quietude. Okay, Yuki, why don't you start us off and you can just read this whole part there. Okay. Hayao Miyazaki remain, remains animated animated even in retirement. Ao Chu explained his vision for Oscar nominated The Wind Rises. Mm -hmm. you, you'd, think, you'd think that after announcing his retirement from the future film Beats last year, 73-year-old Japanese animation legend Hayao Miyazaki never never want want to seek out press would be welcoming a time of quietude. Quietude. Yes, quietude. Good. Yes. So a couple of uh, words I already went over remains animated even in his retirement. <laughs> um, usually people think of retirement as a time to relax and you know go play and have fun and forget about what you did as a job or for money in your working uh, years, but he, not always. <laughs> so this word auteur is a special term for filmmaking and it's when you describe the director of the film and he's also so um, uh, recognized as the, the, the person who created, not just directed it, but produced it and wrote it, that it's basically like he wrote the story. So it's his movie is what it basically says. Um, it's not exactly like author, you know, the who wrote the story, but he's when you look at his movie, The Wind Rises, it's like you say it's his movie, Hayao Miyazaki. So that's how what this word means. It's like it's so tied with him. He's the director, but he's done so much. He's so involved in the movie that it's his vision, really. It's his movie. So um, he explains his vision for, so when you have a vision for something, it's what, it's what you wanted to show. So in terms of movie making, your vision for the movie is what does it mean? You know, what do you want people to understand about it? What did you want to show to the audience? And in case you're not familiar, Oscar is the Academy Awards. So the Oscar is the actual statue that you win. If you win the prize, you get this uh, gold statue that's called the Oscar Award. And so this movie, his latest movie, The Wind Riser, has been nominated for a prize. And um, if he wins, then he gets that Oscar. So it's, no, it's called the Academy Awards, but it's also called the Oscars. So those, that's an award ceremony that happens later this month. Biz, right here, the film Biz or feature film biz just means business so it's a short slang term that we use for business um, he's a legend he's a an an Japanese animation legend so legend is kinda just like a you know he's been around for a long time and a lot of people know him and even when he passes away people will remember him so um, a person who is described as a legend is somebody that is very well known in their field and will be remembered forever, you know, just like Picasso or something like that. So he has never, he is never one or has never been one to seek out press. So some uh, people in the entertainment industry, they like to seek out. That means to get more press, so more press coverage. So people writing about them, talking about them in the news or in the media. So he has not never been a person who liked to seek out. So to seek out is to try to go get. So he's not that kind of person. Uh, so you would think he would want some quietude. Quietude is just quiet. Some some peace, some relaxation. And I just wanted to point out here, just so you guys, as a grammatical thing, you'd, you know, as a contraction, it, uh, short for you would. So you would think, you know. But with a third Oscar nomination in his pocket for The Wind Rises, which has earned $112 million in Japan, and with an English language version to be released in the U.S. by Disney on February 21st, Miyazaki's days are 
far from innocuous. Okay, Wisla. Yes. You can read this paragraph. Read. Okay. Mm -hmm. But but with a, with a third Oscar nomination in his pocket for the Wind Rises, which has earned uh, 112 million dollars in Japan, and with an English language where vers version to be realized in the US by Disney in February 21st. Miyazaki days are far from inoc innocuous. Mm -hmm. Innocuous. Okay. okay. So a third Oscar nomination. So that's his. This is his third in his pocket. That's a kind of informal expression. You know, think about it, putting it in his pocket. He's like collecting these Oscar nominations. So it just means he has it. So he has it, and in his pocket is a just an expression that gives you more of a visual. So he has, uh, he received the third Oscar nomination for his latest movie, and they just tell you how much it's earned, so how much money it has made so far, and that's a lot of money from just Japan. Um, that would be a lot of money for a movie even in, in the United States. Um, and so the English language version hasn't even come out yet, so I imagine that when it does, then that will um, the movie will be a lot more popular here in the United States. You know, for children especially who uh, probably don't read uh, the subtitles because right now it's just in Japanese with English subtitles. So they're going to create a new version with a B. That's called dubbing. So whenever you have uh, it in your language, it's called dubbed. It's a dubbed version. So they're going to dub it into English. And Disney is responsible for doing that. And you need good here, uh, just so everybody knows. A lot of times we have uh, ab abbreviations uh, when we're reading. So we in the writing, sometimes we have abbreviations for our states, things like that. But you always say it. So you wouldn't say Feb. So you you did it right. So February, and then same thing here. We don't say 21. So you did it right. We say 21st, even though we don't put uh, the st. So, but the way you read it is on February 21st. So that was good. Yeah. And so then Miyazaki's days are far from. <laughs> far from means they are not at all innocuous. So innocuous means like nothing is happening, nothing's going on, they're very calm. That's not what's going on for him. He's, so it basically gives you the idea that he is still busy. You know, there's lots of stuff going on uh, in his life still. The Wind Rises tells the story of Jiro Horikoshi, the designer of the A6M fighter plane, known in World War II as the Zero, and is a celebration of engineering as art, hewing close to the themes of Miyazaki's previous Academy-friendly works, Spirit Away, Spirited, Away, 2002, which won the Oscar for Animated Feature, cautions current generations to remember the mistakes of earlier ones, Howl's Moving Castle, 2005, which earned a nomination, promotes calm and reason in the face of aggression. Okay. Oscar? And hi, Mohammed. Oscar, you can start reading from the wind. Whoops. The wind rises, tells the story. The wind rises, tells the story of Jiro Horikoshi, the designer of the uh, six uh, I'm a fighter plane, known in uh, World War Two. Well, uh, yeah. to ask yeah. the stands for World War. Uh, World, uh, World Two. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. As the, <laughs> okay, <laughs> as the zero. Uh huh. And he's a celebration of engineering as art. He will close to the dams of, of Miyazaki's previous Academy Friendly Works. A spirit is away. Uh, mm -hmm. which won the Oscar for animate, animated feature, 
-hmm. How to use current generation to remember the mistakes of early ones. How's moving castle? Mm -hmm. uh, 2005. 2005. 2000. Uh, 2005. Mm -hmm. We shared a nomination. Promote con of reason in the face of aggression. Mm -hmm. Good. So tells the story. So this is the name of the movie that were that is the newest one. So it tells the story of this character, Jiro. And his character is a designer of uh, the A6M fighter plane. Yes, A6M. So the designer is the person who draws the plane, who designs it, who creates what it looks like. And it was a fighter plane used in World War II. And so the movie is a celebration of engineering as art. So to celebrate something is to to um, show that it was, an, um, you know, you want to give it recognition. Just like you might celebrate your birthday, it's like recognizing that you were born that day and that it, you know, it's a special day for you. It's the same kind of thing. They, the movie uh, shows that engineering, so the fact that, you know, you can create a fighter plane is like art. You know, so that's what the, the theme is of the movie. Cueing, that just means following. So it's it's following close to the same uh, themes of his other movies. The themes are the subject matters. So in his other movies, all, um, the two that were also nominated for an Oscar, Spirited Away, the theme of that one is to caution current generations from making uh, same mistakes, basically. Sorry, so sorry. I, I don't understand. Uh, I is a cele celebration of engineering as art. Could you explain in another word? Do you understand what a celebration is? Yes, I understand all words, but I, I don't understand the me all full meaning of this sentence. So the movie is a celebration of engineering as art. So he's he's showing that a person who designs something like a fighter plane is is like an artist. So he, that's the, the, the movie is trying to celebrate that. So usually you think of engineering as a left brain activity, as something that's very logical, very practical. It's not usually seen as a type of art. But in his movie, he wants to celebrate it or show it as, as art. So it's something that um, you put your heart and your soul into. And I imagine, I haven't seen the movie, but that's what um, why it's so important for this character, you know. So he's an engineer, a designer, and he's working on something that's not considered art—a fighter plane in a war. <laughs> but he wants to show people that when you're creating something, it is like art. It is uh, art. This engineering, engineering, uh, yes. it indicates the fighter plane zero. It's, it, it indicates the oh, make it, of it's engineering technology of uh, Hayao Miyazaki's animation. No, of the fighter plane. Oh. Because the Jiro uh, is the character, and he's the person who designs fighter plane. the fighter plane. Yes, and I and know to design story. something, you need to be an engineer. So he's an engineer. Mm. So it's saying basically like it's a celebration of creating airplanes which is engineering task as art. So it's like doing art, even though you're creating this piece of, you know, machinery kind of. Does that make sense? Mm. Mm. Film is a feature of his um, zero the engineering technology, no? Such yes. A kind of meaning. So in the movie, he's telling the story of this guy. He's the character. And what this character does is he designs or creates a fighter plane, right? Usage of celebration, usage of the word celebration is... Uh, it's, uh, the movie is. So you could take all this out right here, me, so. and you could create this story, uh, this sentence. The wind rises is a celebration. So just take that whole thing as a sentence. The wind rises, which is the name of the movie, 
is a celebration of engineering as art. So it's that's what the movie shows. It is a celebration. Do you understand? Like sometimes movies might be uh, depicting, showing certain things, and they're either celebrating it, or sometimes a movie might be um, condemning Criticizing. something, oh, criticizing. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. I, I see. So this movie is celebrating and showing. So it's showing the beauty. The beauty. So showing affirmatively. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So different movies tell a different story. Sometimes you want to celebrate somebody. Maybe you celebrate somebody's life, or sometimes you criticize things. Like if you're criticizing war, you know, or if you're you do, doing uh, criticizing uh, stor historical uh, time or something, you know, like like slavery, you know, something like that. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. I know. Uh huh. So it's it's saying so he he often likes to have these themes these ideas or these subject matters that he's dealing with. So the Spirit Away one was about um, cautioning. So to caution means to tell people to be careful. You know, current generation, so that means modern day people, they need to be careful and they have to remember the mistakes of earlier ones, so earlier generations, so earlier people, and pay attention so that they don't make the same mistake. So that was the theme of this movie and then his other movie, Howl's Moving Castle, which also earned an opination, promotes. So it, it shows um, that's you know that's his uh, theme there is to promote or to say that it's good to be calm and to have reason, you know, in the face of aggression. So even if another uh, political party or a group of people is becoming aggressive with you, like wanting to start a fight or something, he is promoting in his movie calm and reason. So being calm, being peaceful, and being logical, practical, not just getting into a fight. So these are some themes that he works with in his movies. Hey, and I don't understand. Promote, promote, uh, promote calm and reason. Mm -hmm. what, what does this mean? Do you understand to promote something? I, I understand the words, but, but I don't understand the whole meaning. The movie, his message in the movie is to tell people to stay calm and be reasonable even if somebody is becoming aggressive to you. So he's promoting that message. That's his message in this movie, Howl's Moving Castle. So it shows a story, you know, a movie is a story, and in that uh, story it shows people staying calm and being reasonable even though another group of people is trying to fight to be aggressive so to promote peace it means that that's what you believe is good that's your value you promote that you show that that's the best way to do something do you get do you understand that uh does it does it, does it mean mistakes why uh, it 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 to say split it away is successful yeah Yes. And uh, how is the moving castle is a mistake? No. Uh, no? Nope. So let's just take it a little bit one at a time. So Spirited Sorry. Away, the, the, the purpose of that movie or the message, so you understand the word message? Yes. A movie has a message. So the, the Spirited Away message is don't make the same mistakes as previous generations. You have to remember about history, right? Oh. You have to remember what happened... 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. If you have to remember those mistakes were made because if you don't remember you might make the same mistakes. So he's telling people nowadays, current generation, so young people, you know, don't forget about the past. You have to remember, look, they made these mistakes. You don't want to make them. So that's about that movie. And then this is a separate uh, movie. Here, what what area ones means here? Earlier generations. Uh, uh, area ones. Area uh, ones means generations. Yes. Here. Earlier ones refers to the generations. So you have to remember the mistakes of earlier generations or earlier people, uh. like your grandparents. You know, people who went before you. I see. I see. Okay. And then. 
this other movie is a d completely different movie, and it has another message, and that message is to stay calm and to work with reason, means thinking things logically, in the face of. So in the face of means when somebody is trying to be aggressive to you, you know, they're trying to start a war or start a fight or start, you know, be um, tough and rough with you. If you get into it, then you will be in a war. But if you stay calm and you are reasonable and you want to negotiate or something, he is saying in the movie that's a better way. That's why he's promoting that. He's saying that's what's best. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I misunderstood. Sorry, now okay. I don't understand. It's a kind of review of his pre previous movies, yeah? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry for that. No problem. No, time. it's good. Other people might have had the same questions. Wind Rises, though, so the new, the new movie, Wind Rises, though, includes a more specific concern to Miyazaki, who remembers the deprivation of post-war Japan and he has not been silent in opposing the attempts of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to remilitarize Japan. Okay. Nurel, hi there, and hi, Mohammed. Hi, Lisa. Hi, hi Lisa. welcome. <coughs> hi, Mohammed. Hi, Lisa. So, uh, Nurel, do you want to read? You, you jumped in right into the line there. Okay. <laughs> so, this is... Wind rises, though, includes a more specific concern to Miyazaki, who remembers the deprivation of post war Japan. And he has not been silent in opposing the attempts of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to remilitarize Japan. Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, Yuki, I'll go over it. So the, it's kind of like the structure of the way the article was structured. She's telling us, you know, at first that he um, was re said he would be retired, but he hasn't really. He's still kind of active. And then it goes into the fact that um, The Wind Rises has been nominated for an Oscar. It's going to have an English version made. And then it starts telling us a little bit more about the story and it compares it to his other movies so Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle and then it goes back to the movie to explain a little bit more that it ha he in this movie there is a very specific concern so he has a very unique not unique really but he's not trying to talk about a lot of different things he wants to talk about one specific concern so if he has a concern, it's like what he's worried about. And in the, in the story, you understand that what he's trying to uh, tell the audience is, you know, let's remember the deprivation of post-war Japan. Deprivation means uh, the verb is to uh, deprive. So they were deprived of things. So that means that in this post-war period, so after the war, um, a lot of Japanese people didn't have enough food. Their houses were had been destroyed. They had a lot of deprivation, so they didn't have uh, things they needed. When you are deprived of food or water or medical care, it means you don't have what you need. So that was a very um, important time that he's remembering in this movie. And it's saying that he has not been silent. So in opposing, so he had, which means he has been vocal. So he has been speaking out against the prime minister's attempts. So I guess I don't know, but according to this article, the prime minister of Japan is trying. That what is what attempts mean to try to attempt something is to try something, and so he's trying to get Japan to want to remilitarize. So have an army again to, to make the army um, you know get when you militarize a country it means you create a military you create a force and the force is there to uh, be active and to protect the country but maybe also to be uh, aggressive towards 
like other countries. So he doesn't like that. He is in opposition to that because of remembering what happened after World War II in Japan. So it was not a good situation for people in Japan. Um, he so he's quoted here saying, I think Japan is facing a crisis situation right now, he said via a video link up from Disney's Tokyo offices on February 4th. We need to learn from history and protect peace in the Asian area. If we leave the situation as it is right now, I think the old kind of nationalism will prevail and the country will go in the wrong direction. Okay, Mohammed. Okay. Thanks to his films, Miyazaki is so highly regarded in his some in his home country that anything he says is national news. Wait, 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 Mohammed, think, just do the. I think this one. Yeah, that one. No problem. Okay. I think Japan is facing a crisis situation right now. He said via a video link up from Disney's Tokyo offices on February 4th. We need to learn from history and protect peace in the Asian area. If we leave the situation as it is, as it is, mm -hmm. right now, I think the old kind of na nationalism mm -hmm. will prevail and the country will go in the wrong direction. Continue. No, stop there. Uh, Yuki says he hears an uh, echo, so if people want to mute their microphones, that might help. Okay, so he thinks that Japan, his country, is facing a crisis situation. To be facing something means you're you're in it. You know, it's it's you're. Like you think of it yourself, you, you see your face, and then you're looking at something. <laughs> so to face a situation means you're about to have to deal with it. It's something that you're going to have to um, work with, and it may or it may not happen, actually. So it's the possibility. So that's kind of what facing a something means. So you're looking towards it. It might happen. So he's thinking that a crisis situation is is in the making, we say. It's starting to happen right now. Of course, crisis means um, there's a breakdown and that needs attention. It's not a good thing. A crisis is a bad thing. And the situation just means the time period. So they're, they're having a crisis in this time period or some about, and it's about the remilitarization. That's the situation. So what's happening in Japan uh, related to the idea of nationalism and remilitarizing uh, the country and he said it uh, and you said this fine you can say via or via it just means like that's the way uh, you got hooked up here so he is doing this via or via a video link up so some might be Skype or something like that a link up is just how you get linked together so via the video and he's he's encouraging people or telling people look we have to learn from history and we have to protect peace in the Asian area so he's not just talking about in Japan but in Asia as well so that would include you know, other Asian countries like China you know Thailand Vietnam South Korea North Korea those places are considered Asia if we leave the situation as it is, so if you leave something as it is, that means you don't do anything about it. You just let it keep happening as it is. So if we if we don't do anything, he says, then he's saying that the old kind of nationalism. So nationalism is when you believe that your country is better than other countries and you if you're a very nationalistic person then you don't probably like immigrants to come to your country you think that your culture is better your country is better and you might actually try to go and <coughs> conquer other peoples because you're very nationalistic and he's saying if we don't you know do something right now this is what will 
prevail. So what will win? So to prevail means to win. And that would be the wrong direction, going in the wrong direction. So that is not what he wants to happen at all. So that's why he makes a movie with a message. Because he doesn't want Japan to go back to how it was previously because he remembers the bad stuff that happened to the people. Thanks to his films, Miyazaki is so highly regarded in his home country that anything he says is national news. He's also active on Twitter, and global acclaim has furthered his reach. So his position has not gone unnoticed by high-ranking political opponents who have criticized his stance. Okay, Manuel. Uh, go. Uh, thanks to his film, Mikayasi is so highly regarded in his home in his home country has that anything he says is nothing and news. He's also active on Twitter and global acclaim has Twitter his reach. So his position has not gone unnoticed by high ranking political opponents who have criticized his stance. Mm -hmm. So he is highly regarded. That means lots of people really love him and think that he's a very important person. So when a person is highly regarded, people usually listen to them and, and want to know what they think. So when he says something, it's like national news. So people in Japan listen to what he has to say. And it just means here global acclaim. So global or international fame, I would say. Acclaim is when you're famous. So you're, he has been noticed by people from other countries. And because of this, his reach has been furthered. So his reach is further, which means more people listen to him. His reach is like how influential he is outside of Japan. So even people in other countries want to know what he has to say. They think it's important. And so this, this idea that you know other people around the world are listening to him, has not gone unnoticed. So people who are high-ranking political opponents, so people who don't like what he has to say, and they are high-ranking maybe because they're high up in the government or something, they're very influential people themselves, they are noticing what he's saying and they have criticized his stance. His stance means his position, his belief or his values, what he's saying. So they don't like it. <laughs> Yet, Wind Rises features Miyazaki's typically light touch. I did not portray pacifism as an ideology in my film, he said. I wanted to portray young people who strived to live through the difficult times of the 1920s in Japan. Okay, Yuki. Sorry. Uh, yet, yet Wind Rises features Miyazaki's Typically light touch. I didn't know. I didn't. I did not portray fascism and uh, ideology in my film. He said, "I wanted to portray young people who strive strive to live through the difficult difficult times of the 1920s in Japan." Mm -hmm. So a light touch means. You know, even though he has a message, he's not like hitting you over the head with it. He's not saying like, this is what I believe. He's just telling the story and it's, um, it's not a very strong message, but you get the message. But it's done in a very simple, light way. So that's the light touch. As compared to if somebody like tries to hit you over the head with their message, you know, then they, they might make a lot of scenes that make you feel a certain way. But he tells the story, and he's telling us, I did not portray pacifism, so I did not show, portray means to show, pacifism, so that's people, that's an ideology that believes in peace. He didn't really show that. I mean, you know, maybe that's part of it, but what he really wanted to show or portray was how hard the young people were working. So when you strive to do something, 
or for you strive for something, um, it means that's what you're trying to do. But you do it in a very, you know, um, it's not easy when you're striving to do well in difficult times. So he was, that's the story he's really telling. How young people who were suffering um, because of the war and stuff, and uh, before World War II even, in the 20s, they were having a very hard time. So this is um, after World War I. But, and, and what were they doing? How did they make a living? How did they live through these difficult times? That's the story he wanted to tell. Miyazaki said the film depicts the era in which his parents lived and added that the people he chose to highlight from that time were Horikoshi and writer and poet Tatsuo Hori, noted for his work within Japan's proletarian literary movement. One is an engineer, one is an author, so those two people became one in my film, he noted. Okay, Vizla. Okay, Miyazaki said, the film depicts the era in which his parents lived, and added that the people he chose to highlight from that time were Hiroshi and writer and poet Tsuro Hori, noted for his work within Japan's proletarian literary movement. One is, one is an engineer, one is an author, so those two people beca became one in my film, he noted. Mm -hmm. okay. So he says the film depicts, so that's another word like portrays, it means it talks about or it shows uh, the era, so the time period that when his parents were growing up and when they were living, and he chose to highlight, so to highlight means to show them, like in the spotlight, to you know, certainly there are other characters in the film, but the main characters are the ones that you highlight. You make them known to everybody. So he actually took two different people and put them together as one character. So he, that's when you take at different aspects of, you know, two different people and then put them into one. So one was a writer and, and a poet, and the other one was um, the poet. And um, proletarian just means like the working class people. Oh, sorry. One was an engineer, and the other one was the author, and then those two people became one. So the main character, this Jiro guy up there, uh, he is that character. The filmmaker credits Studio Ghibli, which he co-founded with Isao Takahata in 1985 with funding from Takuma Shoten as his creative sanctuary. The studio, an animation powerhouse, produces 2D animated films, TV series, games, and other media content, including Miyazaki's nine feature films, which have earned nearly $1 billion globally. Wow. Okay, Oscar. Okay. Mm. One moment. Okay. Starting from the filmmaker. The, the, film, the filmmaker credits Studio uh, Ghibli, mm -hmm. which he co, co, co founded with Isao Takahata in uh, 1985, mm -hmm. with, with funding from Tokuma Shoten and his creative sanctuary. The studio and animation powerhouse product. Um, Two, two, two dimensions. Yeah, you could just say two D. Two, two D. Yeah. Animated films, uh, TV series, games, and other media content, including Miyazaki's uh, nine feature films, which have earned nearly uh, one billion dollars globally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the filmmaker. So that's uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, credits. So he gives credit. To, that means he says, you know, they, they've helped me. This has been important for me. So this is the studio. So he's giving them credit, and he co-founded that. Um, also, he funding means where you get the money. So funding from. So another um, person here, and he says this is his creative sanctuary. So he's talking about the studio. So the studio going to work at this studio is like his 
creative sanctuary. A sanctuary is usually like a sacred place, a quiet place. You go there to relax, to worship maybe, <laughs> usually. But he's saying it's his creative. So it's where he goes to create. And this studio is an animation powerhouse. So powerhouse describes that it's a very large business, um, and they do a lot of things. So they listed all the things that they do. And his feature films. Feature means they're feature length, so at least over like 90 minutes usually, versus short films, short animated films. So he has nine feature films, and they have earned or you know received nearly a billion dollars globally, so throughout the world. Miyazaki got his start in the biz in 1963 at Toy Animation. He was first drawn to film work when... As a young man, he saw Lev Ataman, Atamanov's 1957 Russian tune, The Snow Queen, and was captivated by the character of the young girl in the film. That character taught me how animation could deeply depict inner feelings, he said. Okay, Nora. Your microphone, there you go. Yes. Uh, Miyazaki got his start in the biz in 1963 at Toei Animation. He was first drawn to film work when, as a young man, he saw Lev Atamanovo's 1957 Russian tune, The Snow Queen, and was captivated by the character of the young girl in the film. That character taught me how animation could deeply depict inner feeling, he said. Mm -hmm. So he got his start in the biz. So, you know, to get your start, that's kind of like a movie uh, industry lingo. To get your start in something, that's, that's how you uh, started, basically. <laughs> to get your start in, like, you know, uh, some industry just means how you started to work in that industry. Um, so that was in 1963 at this Toei Animation Place. So that was his first job, basically. Uh, he was first drawn to. If you are drawn to something, it means you like it and you want to know more and you're interested. So he was interested in film um, when he saw this Russian tune. So we have some, you know, uh, slang here: biz for business and tune for cartoon or animation. And he was captivated by the character. It captivated means he was in awe. He was just so amazed by the character. He was. Sorry, tune is a car cartoon. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Uh, yeah, cartoon. Um, yes. So he was captivated by this. You know, he was very interested, very intrigued, very like, wow. And what he what he taught what his what this character taught him was that animation or you know cartoons, how deeply they can show your inner feelings. So, you know, how the animation, maybe they show the, on their facial expressions or something. To depict, again, means to show. So the animation can really show how people are feeling inside themselves. While he maintained he hasn't gone back on his vow to retire, he noted his visits, um, he visits the kindergarten on the studio grounds daily. He's also fired up about projects he is working on at the Ghibli Museum, located in Inokashira Park in suburban Mitaka and, and open to the public. Okay, Mohammed. While he maintained he hasn't gone back on his vow to retire, he noted he, he visits, visits the kindergarten on the studio grounds daily. He's all, also fired up about projects. He is working on the Ghibli Museum, located in Inokashira Park in suburban Mitaka, and open to the public. Yeah. Okay. So while he maintained, so to maintain something in this case means um, while he continues to say. So apparently he said he wasn't going to um, work anymore; that he was going to retire. It says, while he maintained he hasn't. So he continues to say that he hasn't gone back on. So 
So to go back on means to like change your mind. And you, now you're doing it the way you said you weren't going to do it. You go Like if you go back on a promise to somebody, you promised them you weren't going to do it, and then you changed your mind. So you went back on something. So he's not going back on his vow to retire. So his promise, a vow is your promise to retire. But he does go to the kindergarten. So apparently on the studio business grounds, the grounds are like the campus of the business, they have a kindergarten, probably for the, the workers, kids, and stuff. So he goes there daily, so he's not just staying home and relaxing. And he's also fired up about. So to be fired up about something means you're excited. You want to do it. You're enthusiastic. So he's excited about doing some other projects that he's working on at the museum here. And they tell you where it's located. And suburban means outside of the city. So it's not in the city, but it's outside of the city. Um, and it is open to the public. So people of the public can go to the museum. And he says here, quoting it, I might make something short, he said, after a bit of rumination. So nothing has changed, really. <laughs> OK, Manuel. Just that last little two sentences okay. there. I, I may make something short, he said, after a bit of rumination. So so nothing has changed, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> rumination is when you're thinking about something. If you, the verb is to ruminate, and usually you ruminate on something or about something, it means you think deeply about it. So if somebody, you know, he's in a, being interviewed right now, and then he's sitting there thinking and thinking and thinking, then finally he says, well... I might make something short. So maybe not another feature length film, but maybe a short one. You know, short could be anywhere from, you know, 5, 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. And then he says, because you know he said it because it's in the quotes, so nothing has changed really. So even though he's maybe retired from feature films, he's still interested in doing stuff with animation. Um, and then I just wanted to show you, so this is the... Thing. So you see, if you see this, you might be familiar with his style. This is um, a scene from the or a picture from the movie, and down below here, I also um, put this uh, YouTube link. This is one. There's lots of different trailers you can find, but this was one of them that I found. Um, it's in Japanese, but it has uh, <clears throat> subtitles in English. So if you want to check it out, then you'll obviously you'll see. The scenery and the you know that's the main character there and you start learning a little bit about what what it's about so has anybody seen any of these movies um, either this new one or the other no. ones that it talked about no, no I haven't seen sure. but... no? No. no no I I haven't seen the film but I feel I saw the documentary film about uh -huh. this film uh, yes Oh, okay. Very, it, it sounds very interesting film. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, well, I, um, I, think I, I think I haven't seen them either, but my kids have seen them. <laughs> and they love them. So I know that they're very popular. And so I, I do want to see some now. I'm more interested now. I don't usually think of animated movies as something that I want to see. Like, I think of them mostly for kids. But... I don't think they are. But I think this yeah. film is uh, not not only for children. No, but also not at all. Adults. Yeah. Right, and, exactly. And today, uh, I today the uh, article surprised me. Yeah. Uh, th that uh, after uh, after involved he, his films films to, uh, with uh, Abe minister, Abe administrator's uh, movement of demilitarization. Yes. Uh, uh, before uh, I, 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 I had read to the Miyazaki Hayao's uh, essay, especially spe uh, special written for the Japanese magazine. Yeah. And he he rarely speaks out out his his opinion, mm. uh, especially about the poli politic politics yes. politics. But politics. he then politics. But uh, then he he severely criticized the. Uh, 
a, 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 Now uh, want to change. Yeah, he's uh, he's against yes. that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, but but uh, it is very interesting that I think Miao Hayazaki has a uh, two contradicting uh, contradicting uh, direc di direction in his mind. Yeah. He he hates the militarization. Yes. And he he has a uh, ado ado to the communism. Uh, on the other hand, he 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 as an animator, he he is very fond of uh, such a robot uh, uh, planes um, and tanks, yeah, such such a uh, army. Yeah. <laughs> so such uh, a yeah, I don't know. I have to see the movie to see what uh, you know, because you you can show different things, you know, different tell the story in different ways. So that's an interesting. Piece of art right there. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, we were, we're a little bit over, so I know some people had to leave. If you want to go to another class right now, but thank you for coming to class and for reading. Thank and you, maybe you guys will see some of these movies. They're very popular, and it sounds like he has some good messages in the movies. So we'll see. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, take care. Take bye, care. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. See you, Yuki.